Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Bearcat Chats and a pleasure to be joined by the new head coach of the Binghamton men's basketball team, Lavelle Sanders. Lavelle, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here. Looking forward to uh, share some information with you and, and all of the people that's watching. And what have these first few weeks been like? Um, yeah, it's been it's it, it's been exciting. Um, it's been uh, a lot of work. Um, I'm learning a lot. Um, the, I think the biggest adjustment is just all of the people who are kind of that wants to get in touch with you for different reasons. Uh, you know, they think they have players for you. Uh, a lot of guys want to, you know, be on the coaching staff. Uh, so that's the just the biggest adjustment. You know, I went from kind of assistant coach that nobody really cared about. Nobody, you know, tried to contact to now every day, you know, getting tons of calls, tons of emails. Um, so that's, that's, that's been the biggest adjustment, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been exciting. I mean, I also got a lot of people reaching out and um, rooting for, for me and, and, and the Bearcats. And um, so that's, that's, that's exciting. You're in demand. Your time's in demand. Uh, right. And right. what, how important has it been to have, especially with a team that is young, to have those pre-existing relationships over the past two years? And how do you help or how do you use those relationships to help you adjust to this new role going forward? Um, I think it was important um, because, you know, it's kind of some, it's like continuity, right? And, you know, because I have been here with these guys because most of the guys on the team came in with me, you know, even though I didn't recruit these guys, um, I, you know, I have been able to build good relationships with, with, with all of them, just because, you know, you're around them every day, you know, you work guys out, um, you're in practice with guys, you know, you, you have guys, I, you know, coach Dempsey did it where we had a few guys that were, were part of our academic team. So we basically had to make sure guys were on top of their schoolwork. So, you know, you get a chance to talk to these guys every day and you, you get a chance to build a relationship. So um, I think it was important. I think also they, they've helped me um, and just giving me that kind of calm that, you know, they, they have my back. All of the players reached out and were pretty excited uh, about me getting this opportunity. So um, definitely those, those relationships have helped. Um, and I think going forward, you know, we're going to continue to, to build those relationships. Now they'll get a chance to know me um, in a different role, right? I, I was the I was the assistant that that was always laughing and joking and and, and trying to create a good atmosphere and um and, and not saying I won't do that but you know now you know you have to you know you have to correct guys you have to coach guys and so again it's going to be a little bit a little bit different role that they're going to see me in but I I believe we, we're going to continue to build some some strong relationships. And I guess this is the biggest challenge that any coach around the country or globally faces. How do you connect with each player individually? How do you motivate them so they can elevate their game? Uh, what do you see as your leadership style to be able to accomplish that and see these players grow? I think the, 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 the good thing um, that Coach Dempsey did was he really brought student athletes in that were motivated. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, a lot of times you get um, a college kid or you get a recruit, right? And you, you have this, they come to your university and they're 18, 19 years old, and they've already had some kind of way of their being, you know, raised by their parents. Um, and it's hard to kind of break that or, or change them in, in, in the four years, right? So I think you have to be able, you have to do your homework with the kind of players that you recruit. Uh, you have to, to want to recruit and you try to have, you have to recruit guys that are uh, kind of self-motivated. Um, but I, I just like to use a lot of examples of uh, people that were successful. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I look at myself who, you know, I wasn't, you know, one of these guys that were, you know, one of the top players in the country when they were in high school. Um, you know, I had to, to work and I had to um, compete and I had to scratch and claw for everything I, I got. So um, I can use myself an ex as an example for these guys, um, and if they, you know, if they work hard, what what's possible? Um, but I think again, it's just a matter of giving guys um, examples of um, all of the hard work and, and 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 sacrifices that that people that that have made before them, 
um, that were successful. And if they see that that's the, if they have a model of what they need to, 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 to look, what it needs to look like, I think it gives them an opportunity to, to be motivated. Um, and then also, I think if you, um, if you want to win and you want to be successful, um, there's no way you're going to be able to do that without, without the motivation. So um, I don't think it'll be hard. I think, you know, guys like Brian Johnson and, and Pat, Patrick Norris that's on the staff also have tons of stories um, that they can share with, with guys. Um, I would like to, you know, throughout the year, bring in uh, people who could speak, you know, if we get back to that where we can have, you know, in person um, or maybe it be on a Zoom, but just have people, you know, talk to them and give them um, advice and give them scenarios and where, again, they have to be motivated in order to be successful. Who are the coaches in the profession that have affected you the most, who have shaped your leadership style? So Gil Reynolds was a guy that I think was probably one of the best basketball teachers that I've ever been around. I mean, he knew the game inside out. He was real big on fundament fundamentals. And then, you know, Coach Carlissimo, who I never got a chance, PJ Carlissimo, who I never had a chance to play for, but he did recruit me to, uh, to Seton Hall. And I remember him coming to, you know, coming to Brooklyn and, and me signing my letter. He came in a big blue, big blue Cadillac and everybody from my neighborhood was standing, you know, out in front of my house, you know, waiting for him to come. Uh, so, so Coach Carlissimo, um, and then getting into to Seton Hall, I played for George Blaney, who, uh, who really helped me. And I remember my first practice at Seton Hall, and I, I had a pretty good practice. And I remember him calling me to the office after practice and telling me that he wanted me to exactly the way I played that day in practice. He wanted me to play that way uh, throughout my whole freshman year. He didn't want me to think that I was a freshman and I had to take a back seat uh, to uh, to the to the upperclassmen. Um, so you know, Coach Blaney for three years, really helped me and put me in position to be, to be a, a, the player that I am. Um, and then Coach Amico, who came um, my, my last year at Seton Hall, um, you know, again, we're, we're really close in, in any, any kind of decisions and things that I need to make. He's probably one of the first people I call. So he was probably the first person I called on Sunday um, after I spoke to, 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 to Pat Elliott mm -hmm. and President, President Stinger. Uh, he was the first person I, I did call. And you know, again, he, he always have words of wisdom, you know, he's been through this. So he, you know, he can give me some, some, some advice that, um, you know, come from a place where, you know, somebody who's done it, right. A lot of times, you know, you, you try to seek advice from people who, um, who've kind of walked in, in, in the shoes that you want, you want to walk in. So coach Amica is, 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 is a good mentor uh, for me. And he's, he's someone that, you know, as I said, any, any kind of major decisions, I, I try to, to talk to him about, you know, if it's a good decision or not. Danny Hurley, a guy you knew, you know well too, right? Yes, Danny, Danny is a guy that we, we played together in college for two years. So, you know, we, 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 we have a lot of good conversations. I spoke to him, I wanna say what, last Friday or was the last time I spoke to him. Um, real good guy, really good coach. Um, and he's a guy that, again, who I, I know, who I trust, um, who, who I can lean on for, for advice. Just like, you know, Shaheen Holloway, who, who was a, my backcourt partner at St. He's at St. Peter's. You know, I spoke, yeah, spoke to him yesterday right here in the office for about 30 minutes. Um, you know, he has a lot of things going on. There's a, there's a, you know, there's a, a conference call. There's a, a Zoom call that he does um, every Sunday with, with, with a lot of uh, minority coaches. Um, so he wants me to, to start getting on those calls every Sunday. Um, so, yeah, he's another guy who, again, who's at the beginning of his career um, as a head coach who's doing really well. So, you know, again, he's a guy that, that, that can give me a lot of information. Tell me in terms of uh, the, the team that you're the head coach of, what, uh, how do you envision the style of play? You've got some outside shooters and you have some big men. Um, how do you strike that balance of, of including everyone? I know you talked about wanting to, to up the tempo. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think that we, we have to recognize and we have to understand that, um, Whenever, whenever you have, I think, good teams, um, there's always balance on those teams, right? Like when you have a team where it's just one or two guys, you know, doing all of the scoring, um, usually those teams don't have a lot of success. So, I, 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 you know, that's one thing that, you know, when, when guys get back and it's things that I've been talking to them about already, um, it's just we have to have, a, a we have to really be a team, right? Um, because I do want to play up-tempo style, that, that leads to you have to play more players, right? So 
um, you know, we will play 10, sometimes probably 11 guys, um, just because we do want to keep the tempo high, um, you know, and then I think that that keeps guys engaged. Uh, that also gives guys the opportunity to, to know they're going to play. So they, they, they'll be a, a lot more focused. Um, so, yeah, definitely we we want to we want to do that. But um, you can't run up and down for 40 minutes. There, there comes a time in the game. I know a lot of times, you know, as you know, we always say in the fourth quarter and, you know, in, in the professional ranks, it's like the fourth quarter, the game slows down. So, you know, here after that under eight media timeout, the game probably will slow down because the possessions become a little bit more important. You know, you don't want to take my I want to take a quick shot because you want to work some clock. Um, so you have to you have to be able to execute. Um, and it would be great if you have, you know, big guys that you can throw the ball into sometime in the post, um, maybe get a double team and, and throw it out. And, and, and now you, you're, you're attacking closeouts and things of that nature. But, you know, we have to have balance and in order for us to be successful, we have to have balance. And, you know, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take all the guys that, that's playing. It's going to take the guys that's, that's not playing to buy in. Um, it's going to take, you know, our coaching staff, uh, it's it's going to be a complete team effort. So so my 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 big focus and and what we've been talking about as a, as a staff so far is that we have to get the guys to really buy into to being a team. You know, a lot of coaches talk about their team as a family and try to establish that family culture. Uh, obviously, you've been part of some great programs, going to Seton Hall, playing against some terrific players, then obviously uh, playing overseas, and then. Uh, to your actual, your immediate family, meeting your wife in the Czech Republic. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, them, your daughter, Olivia, and of course, uh, the newest arrival or upcoming new arrival, your uh, a second daughter. Congratulations on that as well. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my wife and daughter, uh, they, they're my biggest fans. Um, they, my wife has, has no idea about basketball and I, I like it that way because mm -hmm. we don't have to talk basketball you know when we when we lose or when we win you know when I come home and the game is over the game is over right so um but my wife and, and daughter they've made a tr tremendous sacrifice um by coming you know to 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 uh, Binghamton with me um and and to embark on this this journey um my wife is, is as you said is from the Czech Republic you know she's a her father is from Zimbabwe and her mother's from, from the Czech Republic. Um, she was born in Prague, born and raised in Prague, you know, all of her life. Um, we've been together, I don't want to get this wrong, 13 years now. Um, uh, next year will be our 10 year anniversary, um, July, July 19th, her birthday. So I, that was, that was good. I, I didn't, I didn't, I did it that way. So I wouldn't ever forget, you know, our anniversary, you know, so I know that's one thing that a lot of people a lot of people forget so both um, on the same our, day yeah both on the same very day. efficient uh, very efficient yes very july 19th so um but yeah my wife is um she's a she's a fun person she she really um encourages me to to kind of go out and and, and do the things that i want to do she she i have her full support um you know a lot of times you know you have these situations where um you know and I, i've seen this you know a lot where you know people kind of go from one place to another and you know things don't work out because you know one 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 person in the relationship is not happy um my wife is is is, is very supportive um, olivia is very supportive um they they want me to to, to go out and, and and achieve all the things that i want to achieve and again you know some someone has has to make a sacrifice and and, and unfortunately is them in this situation um, but they, they're handling it like, uh, like true professionals and, um, you know, without them and the support, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So, you know, I have to thank them for that. And I, I thank them, you know, every time that I get, uh, I give them, I give them thanks. So, um, they're my, my backbone. And again, they're the other reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And Olivia is six years old. Yes. Olivia is six years old. She, uh, she attends St. John's. Uh, here in uh, in Binghamton um, Catholic School, she uh, she does you know gymnastics. She's played soccer. She's started playing the guitar. Uh, she's just a a bundle of energy. I kind of she feels like she's older than than six. Um, a lot of the the people where we live and in, in the building where we live, they they can't believe she's six years old. Um, she's bilingual. She speaks Czech. She speaks English. Um, 
my wife also is she's she's trilingual she speaks czech english and german yeah olivia is is is, is fun you know she's really looking forward to um to our new one that's on the way uh stella a big sister. Have a for excuse me she's gonna be a big sister yeah she's gonna be a big sister she's looking forward to that she wanted a she wanted uh, a brother <laughs> um so but she says she'll be happy for a, a healthy a healthy uh, sister well, that's a very mature outlook. She is beyond her years. Right, uh, right, right. <laughs> well, uh, Lavelle, it's a pleasure to speak with you and to introduce you to our audience um, and only wishing you continued success. Really looking forward uh, to seeing you in action as the off season continues and into the fall and winter with basketball getting underway. I appreciate it. And I, I just want to say to, you know, to the Binghamton University, to, to all of the fans, to the people, uh, you know that 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 tunes in. Um, we are excited to to uh, have this opportunity to um, represent the university. Um, we will definitely represent the university um, in top notch fashion. You know, we want to bring an exciting style of play uh, to the court that'll make you guys proud and make all of you want to come and watch um, our Bearcats play. So. We look forward to hopefully getting fans back in the arena. So, you know, we'll get a chance to see all you guys um, next next season. Um, but until then, go Bearcats.